Good afternoon and God bless you, my most amazing artists. How are you? Ready to create? <clears throat> I make messes, I make mistakes, but deep inside, I've got what it takes. I am an artist. All right, boys and girls, today in art class, we are going to use our lines to draw a large rhino that fills up your paper space. We're going to repeat lines and shapes to make patterns inside your rhino's body and horns. Then we're going to add color to create contrast that makes your rhino stand out from the background. Now, our inspiration for our rhino drawings comes from a very famous artist. His name was Albert Dürer. He was a German painter, printmaker, and mathematician during the Renaissance time. And this is a self-portrait that he made of himself. Now he became famous before he was 30 years old with his religious artworks and self-portraits. And he's also known for this very famous woodcut of a rhinoceros. Now he made this woodcut based on a written description and loose sketch by another artist because he'd never seen a rhino in the real life before. In fact, most Europeans at that time had no idea what a rhinoceros looked like because they were not native to their area and only a few specimens had been brought from India to Europe. So Duro's rhino woodcut became the only rhino that many people would ever see. So today, I'm gonna take you step by step on how to draw a rhino like I drew these two. This one I did in all crayon and this one I made using my markers. And when I take you step by step today, I'm gonna use a black oil pastel and some watercolor paint. But if only if you only have crayons or markers, that's okay. You can still do this artwork with us. And it will come out fantastic just like these. Are you ready to get started? All right, here we go. You want to turn to the next page in your sketchbook after your spring bunny drawing. And you want to turn your paper, turn your sketchbook so that it's in the wide position. And I have over here some, some scrap paper. So like a piece of notebook paper or a piece of plain computer printer paper, whatever you have to practice or doodle on. So see, I was practicing my rhino heads here. So you can practice on a separate piece of paper uh, before you get started in your sketchbook. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our black, mar you can use a black marker, you can use a black Sharpie, or you can use your black crayon. Whatever you have that's black will work just fine. And you want to come to the top of your page about two fingers and make a dot, two fingers down. Then you want to come to the middle of the side of your paper and you wanna make an another dot, two fingers away from the edge. So now I have two dots, but I need to connect them. And we're gonna do that by drawing a curved line making the letter U. So we're gonna start up here towards the top of our paper at our dot 
and we're gonna draw a letter U. Nice big U, you want a nice big rhinoceros head. All right, so now we need to connect our lines together so that we create a crescent shape. So you're just gonna go ahead and connect these with a curved line, just like that. Now we're gonna draw a curved line to make the nose of our rhino. So we're gonna start at the top of our crescent shape and go to the bottom of our crescent shape with a curved line. And that's gonna give us our nose or the front horn. Then you can add ears, an eye, and a mouth. So the ears are at the top of our crescent. Just draw a curved line that looks kind of like a leaf and then draw one going the other way. Now we're gonna add a mouth, curved lines, and an eye. Now we need to add a second horn near the middle of the head. So we're gonna draw uh, a kind of a triangle. right in the middle of our crescent here. There we go. All right, next, we are gonna to start to draw the body of our rhino. So we're gonna go up here at the top in between our ears and we're gonna draw a curved line from there all the way over to the bottom of our page. But we're gonna be a finger space from the bottom. You don't wanna go all the way to the bottom. You wanna leave a finger space. So we're gonna draw from the ears a curved line going down around and then stop that finger space away. All right, now we're gonna draw our four legs. So we're gonna do a horizontal line going side to side, a short. Then we're gonna go up a short line, over a short line, down a short line, horizontal, vertical, and then we're gonna stop. So that gives us two legs. Now we're gonna go over to our head and we're gonna draw a line from the head coming down a finger space from the bottom of our paper. We're gonna do a short horizontal, a vertical, horizontal, a vertical, horizontal, a vertical. And now we're gonna connect these over. That's gonna be the little belly of our rhino. And there we go, we have a body of our rhino. All right, now we're gonna add a tail and some bumpy toenail details. So we're gonna come to the back of our rhino and we're just gonna draw a curved line and then go back to our body just like that. And we'll add some little lines to show the tail there. All right, now we're gonna add our bumpy toes they're just curved lines. I think you can fit three in there. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three toenails and our toenail details are done. All right. Now we're going to break up the rhino's body with straight lines, all right? So we want to divide our rhinoceros body into sections. So we're gonna start at the top of our rhino and draw to the bottom of our rhino, just a straight line. 
Then we're gonna draw another straight line going from, from that first line and over to the edge of our rhino. Then we're gonna move up that line a little bit and we're gonna draw from the line to the head. Now we're gonna draw a diagonal line from the line we just drew down to the leg. And then we'll do another diagonal from the leg up to the head. Um, let's see, that's a big piece. So let's go ahead and divide that one. I'm gonna start here and end up there. And then let's do one more down here. Now our rhino is divided up into different sections. So next what we want to do, uh, we don't want to draw any patterns inside the face. So leave the face just how it is, but we can add patterns to the horns and then a different pattern inside each section that we made with our drawing kind of looks like our rhino looks like a quilt. Do you have a blanket at home with a quilt that has different patterns in it? I have a quilt here at home and I love to sleep with it. All right, so some pattern ideas are lines, zigzags, swirls, bumpy lines, circles, squares, castle lines, stars, Use your imagination and come up with your own pattern inside each section. See if you can challenge yourself to not repeat any patterns twice. All right, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and add, let's do some curved lines in my horn. I'm gonna go with some polka dots inside that horn. Let's do let's try some wavy lines. Let's go with some, let's do some bigger polka dots here. I'm gonna do some diagonal stripes. Let's do some, let's do some spirals here. shape. How about mm, 
and have a naive. Let's go with some stars. All right, and I'm going to add a little ear detail. And there we go. I think our drawing is done and we're ready to add the color. All right, now if you only have crayons or markers, please go ahead and use your crayons and markers to add your color. You're the artist, you can use any colors you'd like. I'd just like you to pick one solid color for your background, All right? That's what's going to uh, give you that contrast. It's gonna make your rhino stand out and pop out from your background. All right, but if you're gonna follow along with me and you have some watercolor paint, we're gonna use some watercolor paint. So all you need is your tray of watercolors, uh, a little cup of water to rinse out your brush, some paper towels, and we're ready to go. So start with your lightest color first. And so the lightest color is going to be your yellow. So you wanna start with your yellow first. And you're just gonna paint right over. And you wanna paint the edge nice and slow and then fill it in. Go right over your crayon or your oil pastel. Remember, they're best friends. They won't cover each other up. So now I have a yellow shape here, and I wanna go ahead and add another yellow shape. Let's see, I'm gonna come over. Here, and I'm going to paint the edge and then fill it in. Let's do another happy yellow shape there. And now I think I'm going to do my rhino's nose with yellow also. I'm going to trace the outline or the edge of my shape and then I'm going to fill it in. All right, now I'm gonna rinse out my brush as I'm done with my yellow. And now I'm gonna go with, uh, let's go with, uh, where do I wanna put some red? So now I'm gonna go to my red and I think I'm gonna paint my horn here red. And my ears red. And my toenails. I think I'm even going to do my tail. Let's put some red over here. There, now I have red all spread out around my picture. I'm gonna rinse out my brush because I'm gonna change colors. Let's go with some orange. I'm gonna go with some orange. And let's see. I'm gonna 
paint. I want to spread out my orange. my edges, fill it in. I have a shape here with orange. Let's do this one here, orange, tracing my edges. And then filling it in. carefully and slowly and then you can go quick and fill it in all right I'm done with orange I'm gonna rinse out my brush Next, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna go with some blue. Let's do some blue. And I'm gonna paint a blue shape here. Carefully trace your edges. Use the tip of your brush. Press gently, softly, lightly. Don't press down hard. And then you can fill it in. out my brush and next I'm going to do some purple I need some purple on my rhino I'm gonna trace my shape nice and careful going slow and then I can fill it in I'm gonna do this shape purple. Trace your shape slow. And then you can fill it in quicker. All right, my rhino is done. Oh, he looks amazing. All right, my last step, I'm gonna rinse out my brush and I'm gonna paint the background. All right. You can paint the background with whatever size paintbrush you have. Uh, if you have a larger paintbrush, I recommend using that because you can go ahead and paint it a lot quicker. So I'm gonna show you that today with the large paintbrush. And I'm gonna do it in green, in green. Uh, let's see, do I want a dark green or a light green? Well, I want him to stand out. So I'm gonna go ahead with a dark green. You wanna trace around your, your rhino and trace the edge and then go ahead and fill it in quick. Trace very 
slowly and carefully. And then I can fill it in. Trace slow and careful. Even with the big brush, I can get into this tiny space. I'm just using the tip of my brush and I'm not pressing down hard on the brush. I need to get a little bit more water and a little bit more paint. And then I'm gonna come around here. I'm gonna trace very slowly and carefully around my rhino. I notice I'm running out of paint, so I'm going to dip back into my paint. And then I can go ahead and fill it in. Doesn't take a lot of paint. Tray slow and careful right around the edge of my rhino and then I can fill it in. And then you can smooth any parts out. If you have puddles of watercolor, you can smooth, smooth that out so you don't have puddles. Oops. Well, that sometimes happens. That's all right. Just gonna go ahead and rinse out my brush. See, I touched the red paint and it was still wet. But that's okay. I'll show you how to fix it. Take a clean brush. And a paper towel. Blot it, and you're kind of soaking up that extra paint. There we go. Now I can take and go back into my green, and then I'm just gonna paint right around that. Be really careful not to touch my wet paint, and then I'm gonna just smooth it out. See. When we oops, we could always use our brain to try and think of a way to fix it or make it work with our picture. all fixed. All right, boys and girls, uh, allow your painting to dry. Remember to rinse out your brush, wash it out with a little soap and water very gently so that you take care of your paintbrush and allow your picture to dry. Uh, remember to put in a, a scrap piece of paper. I used a red piece of construction paper just to keep uh, the paint from going through to my next page uh, and uh, in case I go past my edges uh, it acts like a placemat all right so just allow that to dry overnight and the next day you can sign your artist name when it's all dry congratulations boys and girls you've made your very own rhinoceros drawing.
Happy creating. Until next time. Bye.